After Battlefield 3 and 4 in modern settings, we jumped back into the Great War with Battlefield 1. That means this time, as we revisit World War 2, the time has come, of course, for Battlefield 5. Despite that puzzling numbering system, Battlefield 5 promises a bunch of new systems, a wide array of maps, and a new dedication to treating Battlefield as a live service that can continually grow and evolve. Things started off shaky with the community response to the game's reveal, but after playing until my thumbs were raw, I think the Battlefield community is going to dig Battlefield 5. Those familiar with the franchise already know what to expect, but let's outline it for the uninitiated. Battlefield is known for simulating warfare at an epic scale, with objective-based game modes allowing players to be part of the greatest battles in history. With Battlefield 5, and after several years away from the era, players will wade back into World War II. I can hear many of you yawning already, so let's discuss what makes Battlefield 5's take on World War II unique. For one, the beaches of Normandy were off the table from the start. I asked DICE's Ryan MacArthur about the temptation to do Normandy with the way technology has progressed, and his response was simply that no one wanted to make a game that's already been made. Their focus was on telling stories that haven't been told, and the game's War Stories mode backs that up. Each of the bite-sized hour or two stories is both personally motivated and broadly interesting, with my favorite of the introductory three being the tale of the Senegalese contingent of France's colonial forces. The writing is kind of disappointingly heavy-handed throughout, but the morals of the stories manage to resonate with me as someone who's pretty interested in the era surrounding World War II. For the most part though, the structure of the story missions was a miss for me. There are certainly moments that capture what Battlefield is all about, but multiple sections play out like you might capture an outpost in a Far Cry game. It's not bad, strictly speaking, but it's odd to focus on that repeatedly when it's utterly absent from the focus of Battlefield 5, the multiplayer. The incredible scale and sandbox nature of the franchise is alive and well in Battlefield 5. There's a frenetic pace to the action that leaves combatants feeling flustered and in need of fresh air, with ridiculous, I can't believe that happened, moments coming fast and furious. The shooting mechanics more or less keep up with the action, and guns behave predictably thanks to some reworked physics. A few hours in, I was pretty comfortable with how my Lee Enfield would perform in various scenarios. For those new to the series, that should make matches vastly more approachable in Battlefield 5. That said, there are a lot of glitches still to be worked out here. I've seen corpses suddenly shoot into the air. Mantling over terrain is highly inconsistent. I clip through terrain at a disturbing rate. And soldiers who are bleeding out have a terrifying tendency to clip through walls, other bodies, and vehicles. Visual glitches are one thing, but those that affect gameplay are pretty frustrating. I played a lot as a medic, and when you can't revive someone thanks to how they've clipped, it doesn't feel very good. And it's for the wrong reasons. War should feel like hell. As a lesson to future generations, it's important to lay bare the facts of World War II. Millions died, and the brief moments of victorious glory were tiny ripples in an ocean of suffering. Moment to moment, the struggle of war is apparent. You'll die often. I sense that's by design to encourage the new squad play features DICE has included. Many battles in World War II were won because one side outlasted the other and prevailed in a battle of attrition. That concept is in play in a big way in Battlefield 5, and means that playing your class and sticking with your squad is much more than just a fun idea. Squadmates can revive each other when they go down, and respawns can happen at a squadmate's location deep behind enemy lines. It's a huge tactical advantage, though my time on live servers thus far indicates that getting a solid crew together is pretty important. I can't really overstate how frustrating it is to watch three of my teammates sprint off in different directions, or to watch medics run right past wounded soldiers into the line of fire. Newsflash, that's a super bad idea. Surviving and saving tickets when you ought to be dead is crucial to victory in Battlefield 5. DICE's new fortification system has the potential to drastically change outcomes too, if you can convince your team to do it. Most objectives on the map have sandbag walls that can be built, trenches that can be dug, and barbed wire that can be laid out to hold up your enemy. It's pretty effective. One time, I pushed a little too far over a hill, only to have a teammate build a wall right behind me. I died. That's not the intended use, of course, but it highlights the fact that you can strategically build to funnel enemies where you want them to go. The maps in Battlefield 5 effectively do the same thing, and it's been interesting to see which objectives inevitably become the focal point of battles. For example, I haven't played a single match on Aerodrome, where the central hangar hasn't become an incredibly frantic battle. Almost all of the eight launch maps play out that way, although some are way more fun than others. 
The towering bridge and broad marshes of twisted steel are great for the aforementioned battle of attrition, and the vibrant colors and wide open fields of Arras are a visual treat. The closed in and oppressive feel of devastation is very effective, but the matches there are more Call of Duty than Battlefield, with the number of camping snipers and blind corners. In a surprising move, all future modes and maps for Battlefield 5 are going to be free. That's fantastic news for more reasons than one, not the least of which is the fact that things feel a bit thin in the launch version. The eight maps are almost enough, but almost all the modes boil down to point control with a modification or two. Fine, that's Battlefield's bread and butter, but a little more variety once in a while would have been a treat. The most interesting of the modes is Grand Operations, as it throws multiple maps, multiple modes at your group over multiple in-game days. It's really satisfying to eke out a victory on day one, but I never felt that that victory had game-changing effects in day two. Some of the spawn rates seem to get tweaked, and you might have more respawns to work with, but more or less there's one defined path to each operation. If, for example, you post a major victory in the Rotterdam raid as the Allies, the epilogue voiceover is along the lines of, uh, hey, we won, uh, cool beans, but oh yeah, Rotterdam is still going to fall. When you've invested 45 minutes or so into the match, it'd be nice to feel somewhere along the way it had meant something. I'd love to see branching paths implemented in future Grand Ops. On a visual level, Battlefield 5 is stunning. That's no surprise given 1. DICE's pedigree and 2. the Frostbite engine. The weather effects are particularly convincing as snow whips past your plane on Narvik, or the fog settles over Rotterdam. Things are obviously gorgeous on a beefy PC, but the Xbox One X holds up mighty well as well. Texture pop-in is a bit of an issue at times, but the locked-in 60fps frame rate is fantastic to see. The score is a little less prominent than Battlefield games I remember, but when it shows up it's beautifully arranged and recorded. One thing I wished for at times was sharper sound effects. They're good, no doubt, but I wanted some more snap from nearby sniper fire, and more rumbling in my chest while piloting a tank. If DICE is telling the truth, and Battlefield 5 develops into a long-term, always evolving online game, fans are really in for a treat. The bones of Battlefield 5 are very robust. It looks outstanding, plays great, and the stories of World War II are a constant draw for history fans. There are rough patches for the time being, but if those get smoothed out and the content pipeline remains full, Battlefield 5 stands to have a very, very long shelf life with shooter fans. Regarde Idrissa. Nous sommes des rois.